Hello everyone, we are so excited that you're tuning in today. We're going to be showing you how to take old vintage books, which you can thrift or maybe have lying around the house, and transforming them into this gorgeous Valentine's Day book stack. First, we're going to start with creating our mold castings. We're going to use our IOD air dry clay, and we like to dust our molds with a bit of cornstarch. That just helps you get that clean impression and have them pop out of the mold super easily. We like to roll our clay up into one piece and press into the cavity. That's going to help maintain that single piece without any breakage. If you add multiple pieces, you can get a little bit more breakage and then use that micro rim to get a nice flat back. And we're going to go ahead and pop that out of our mold here. And you're going to just love this beautiful detail using our clay. And then we're just looking at all those details. And then we're going to use our IOD trimmings one mold. You can choose which other, whichever framing you want. We like the one on the top here and you're just going to go ahead again, press that clay in there as one piece. If you need a little bit extra, you can always add that in. Then you're going to go ahead and pop those beautiful designs out and add them to your other collection here. We are going to be doing two books. You're only going to see one on screen, but when you're doing this at home, make sure that you create two books, do them at the same time. The only differences between the two books is that one will have always and stamped onto the spine and the second one will have forever and it will not have the frame on the front. So you can see here where putting these uh, mold castings down using our tight bond quick and thick, which is the glue that we'd recommend to put these on. And you see on that first one, a little piece broke off and she just pulled that back up and just kind of smush it back on there. You can add a little bit of glue until you get it how you like, but a little bit of breakage is no problem. Just go ahead and work with it and put it back together and you'll be all good. And you will never notice at the end. So we're going to go ahead and line up our mold casting on the top. Going to put some glue here. And then you'll see we use some tools in a few minutes and these are for polymer clay. You can pick them up at a local craft store, but this just helps us form our clay exactly how we want it. And these are a great tool um, to fix cracking after things have dried and to just make little cuts like we are here to adjust our clay exactly as we want it as we're working. So pretty cheap tool you can pick up to help you mold the clay. So you see we're adding that to our spine here and just taking that piece off, making sure the glue holds down and we get that just how we want around the front of the book. And then you can see it like that. And we put these on wet, of course, because we were molding it around the side. And here we're going to put it on the spine and we're going to leave it off that back cover. So it's going to lay flat on that second book. Next, we're actually going to do resin on the front because we don't need that to shift at all um, as we did on the spine. We needed to mold that. Resin uh, is much harder, of course, and it holds up better. And sometimes it can be easier to get a really clean, perfect casting. You also don't have to wait for it to dry to paint because you have already let it set in the mold. So here we're using the Amazing Cast Quick Set Resin. This sets up in about 10 minutes. If you look at our molds, you can see exactly how much you need to fill the exact cavity that you're working with. So you can mix the exact amount of resin using a scale so you don't have any waste. If you don't have a scale, that's okay. You can always mix it up. And if you have extra, pour it in a casting so you can have extras for later. We also like to use the letters molds if we have just small amounts because those will fill up really easily. And then you can use those for a future project and not waste any of that resin because who likes waste? Not us. So we're going to do this round frame, this ornate frame. See, so we're just going to fill it up there just to the edge. We we'll put the popsicle stick in, just move it around just to make sure that went all the way into the edges. We don't want to miss anything there. We have mixed up this beautiful, delicate, light pink chalk paint, and we're going to be covering our entire book surface with this. And if your clay is a little wet, that's fine. It can actually help prevent cracking. Painting it wet, you're just going to want to be delicate with your brush so you don't lose any of those details. 
then once you're ready you can go ahead and glue on that frame you obviously want to make sure that's all set up and pop it out of your mold when it's done it will be white when it's all finished center that on your book cover and apply now you're going to paint over the top of that we didn't show it here but because you can't see the dry time but obviously you want to make sure that that paint was dry enough before you put the glue on so that it all adheres well we went ahead and grabbed our iod ephemeral melange transfer and we chose one of these beautiful little flowers to add to the front. You can see we took a pencil to just mark what we wanted to use and we're gonna go ahead and cut that down to a circle so it's nice and easy to transfer on there and we get a crisp edge. And then we pull the backing off, go ahead and line that up in our frame. Of course here it's very important that that paint is all the way dry because if it's not, you will not get the transfer coming off and you'll have a little bit of a mess on your hands. So you're going to use the transfer stick, rub that on, and how cute is that? They're looking so good. These are going to come together. Next, we are going to add an alphabet from our typesetting stamp. And we're going to choose the letters for always and. Of course, you only have one of each letter, so you have to plan out your spacing using the letters. And then when you come back in to do a letter that appears two times you just want to leave a space for that and you'll come back in and stamp that on the spine we'll show you how to do that we're using our iod ink here and i believe this is our gray you could use a black you could use a gray whichever you have whichever you feel is going to look best you could even do it in red on yours that's totally up to your creative mind and we use a thin mount, thin mount here and what you might notice is we've actually cut our thin mounts down. This makes it easier for these small projects and the thin mounts aren't too expensive. So you could grab one that you can cut down and you see how we just demonstrated how you stamp in those extra letters that are repeated. So once this is all dry, we're gonna go ahead and seal in with our clear wax. This is just gonna keep everything protected. And then we are gonna come back in with a dark wax. We always like to start with the clear wax first because then the project won't get too dirty with the dark wax. And I just wanna remind you here, we are doing two books. So on your second book, you just wanna make sure you stamped the word forever on the spine. We used the large letters for that, the capital letters. And then you'll wanna make sure you don't put a frame on the top just so those stack nicely and leave the molds off the bottom of both books so that you have a nice flat surface on both. And then you can see here, after we apply the dark wax, we're just gonna go ahead and wipe all of that off and look at that beautiful texture. It looks so aged and it just really finishes a piece. It can be a little scary though when it gets all muddy and you're just not quite sure what the reveal is gonna be. So you just have to trust the process here and of course, when you're wiping your wax off, you want to make sure that your molds are dry enough so that you're not um, getting any kind of warping. So make sure to do your waxing after those are nice and dry. We're going back in with a brush just to pop a little bit more detail. We wanted those to come out a little bit brighter. So there are no mistakes. You can always go back and fix something, add a little bit of dimension or a little bit of color to get something the way you want it but don't fuss with it too much. It's probably looking great as it is. Trust your process and have a great project. We hope you love this. Like and subscribe for more.